Welcome to Inking on the Fly. My name is Amy Jasper. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Canada and I'm excited to share with you a technique that I found online that was shown on Lal Thompson's uh, YouTube site so you can check out more over there if you want to see what else she has to offer. Um, this technique is a watercolor technique on tissue paper and it also involves a little bit of embossing too so check it out watch the video i hope you enjoy it and that maybe you learn something new um, if you do like it make sure you click on that like button welcome to another inking on the fly with amy uh, today i wanted to share with you a technique that i found from a uh, crafter named lol thompson online uh, she has a great video of showing off all the various things you can do with this technique. Um, it is watercolor tissue paper. So I did this with my class, um, my last technique class. And all you start with is a piece of basic tissue paper. This is just packaged tissue paper. Mine has, I don't know what that is, fluff hopefully. Ink, I don't know. Ink, let's do another one. Um, yeah, this is just packaged, you know, gift wrap tissue paper. Um, if we've never met before, my name is Amy Jasper. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I have been that for 13 years here in Canada. And yeah, I'm just enjoying sharing stuff with you online and doing Facebook Live videos and um, YouTube videos. And so I'm branching out so thanks for joining me okay so for my class we did this one way and i'm going to show you that way first and then i'll show you an alternate way so with my class we used um re-inkers stampin up re-inkers so today i'm going to use pineapple punch mango medley sorry melody mango melody and calypso coral so we will add a few drops of mango, or sorry, pineapple punch to, this is a Stamparatus plate, actually. It's very handy for watercoloring techniques because it um, is non-porous, obviously, so, and clear. So I can, anyways, I, I find it helps. It makes these sorts of things easy. An alternate um, surface would be uh, a tile, a piece of smooth, like a uh, glossy tile would be good for this sort of technique. So I'm adding drops. I added pineapple punch and this is mango melody. I don't know why I always want to say medley, but it's melody. I'm going to add more pineapple punch because I like pineapple punch. It's very bright and happy and I want to be bright and happy too. <laughs> and this is Calypso Coral. So using ink directly gives you quite a bold option, a bold technique, but you can kind of end up with water drops left on your surface and that can be, I don't know, annoying. I don't know if you know what I mean. Sometimes if you do watercoloring techniques, you can end up with um, just concentrated spots where the dots were so you have to be a little more careful so this is just water in a I don't know dollar store spray bottle my all of my it doesn't want to spray sideways all of my stampin spritzers these things have ink in them right now so I couldn't use a stampin spritzer normally I would use a stampin spritzer for this Okay, so, so now you can see what I mean, those drops of sort of concentrated ink spots. So I'm going to use just a paintbrush, a regular paintbrush. I was using an aqua painter, but I found because of the concentration of this, of this ink, um, it was just making my, it too hard to clean my, my aqua painters. So this way I don't have to worry about that. So see how I could spread out those ink 
concentrated ink spots with my paintbrush. Okay, then I just take my tissue paper and I'm gonna crumple it a little bit to get some interesting creases here. I'm gonna lay it on top of my water. And see how those creases that I made gave me some interesting patterns? Kind of like tie-dyeing if you wanna think that way. But because of the crinkles, it also doesn't want to fully lay down, but that's okay. That'll just give me a different look. Okay, so I have that. Now I've just got sort of a wet, soggy mess. Tissue paper, when it's wet, as you know, will tear really easily. So one thing that Lol Thompson did in her video was just let it air dry. And it takes, she said, about 15 or 20 minutes. I'm too uh, impatient for that. So I'm using a piece of oh, paper towel. That heart was hard to find that word. I don't know why. I'm just laying that on top. I'm going to use my bone folder to run across there just so my fingers don't get too terribly inky. And then we have a less wet soggy mess, but my tissue paper is still delicate. So now I will take my heat tool and you'll have to pardon the noise friends. Um, so I'm going to take my heat tool and I'm going to heat set this surface until the paper starts pulling away from my Stamparatus plate. Now I don't know if these, how resistant to heat these Stamparatus plates are. So I just don't spend very much time in one spot. Um, just in case, I don't know. I think the worst it would happen, the worst that would happen is it might get a little foggy in a spot. I don't, I don't know. I've done this and it hasn't been a problem. So just be careful. If you do choose to use this temperatus plate, be careful when you're applying heat. Okay, so pardon the noise. see it starting to lift away from the Stamparatus plate. That's how I know it's getting pretty close. This side's a little sticky yet. There we go. Okay, so this one I did a little crumpling before I put it in the, uh, my wet, on my wet Stamparatus plate. And it kind of, I like it. It's very, I don't know, veiny and Ah, cool. I kind of like that. I didn't do that with my other ones. So you'll see when I compare these ones that I'm doing today with the other ones, you'll see a little bit of variation. So that'll be interesting. So that was with the ring inkers. So now I'm going to show you with the, the ink pads. So first I'm going to just really make sure this is clean, although I'm still using the same color. So probably doesn't matter. Okay, so this time I'm going to use my ink pads. So pineapple punch. Mango med melody. Melody. Not medley, not mango medley. <laughs> mango melody. and flirty flamingo oh my goodness i have two different kinds of ink pads and i get confused okay so now you can see i have because i'm not using um the ink drops i won't have ink droplets to worry about but now i have edges so if I don't want, 
sharp edges, I might still use my paintbrush. Let's see what happens when I spritz this. I'm going to have to pull this up a bit just because my spritzer doesn't want to spritz. Well, maybe if I turn this there, that'll work, I think. Okay, we'll be fine. Spritzing with water. So you can see I still have kind of defined lines, so I'm just going to use my paintbrush to swirl those bits around a bit. Okay, second piece, next piece of tissue paper. This one I will crumple like I did the other one because we want to be able to compare the techniques of applying ink. So lay that one down. So one thing I do definitely see compared to how I did it before this video is that there's more kind of pockets of white, which is okay. You can also add, you can add a little more water over top to help it blend. But because I crinkled it, you look at all these veins. I just find that so cool. Okay, so then again, we'll take, of course it's just out of reach. There we go. We'll take, to, um, again, paper towel. Why is that such a hard word? I have tissue paper in my brain, and so I want to say tissue paper. So again, we can lay that on top, pick up some of that excess water and a little bit of the ink. If we let it dry on its own, you might get a, a more, like you, you might end up with a nice darker image. So already you can see, I think it's quite a bit lighter with the ink pads because there's quite a bit less ink being used. Okay, I'll heat set that. Okay, so that was with the ink directly to the Stamparatus from the ink pads. So the difference in intensity is interesting. So this one was re-inkers on the Stamparatus with this watercolor tissue technique. And this one is with the ink pads. So you can see it's much more intense because I had, I, I put more ink on with the re-inkers so it just depends. This one's quite soft and pretty. So it depends. You know what? This one sort of makes me think of flames a little bit. So I could see that um, being used in an interesting way. Okay, so the next phase for this technique, this isn't the end. It's not over. Um, so we're going to put away the Stamparatus plate. We do not need it anymore. And then I have some cut pieces of Whisper White cardstock. And I'm going to show you kind of two different ways to do this. So what I did with my class was I, what did I do? I used my embossing buddy over top of the tissue paper. Carefully so I don't tear it. And then um, I did a quick crumple, making sure I take note of which side is up so I can see the position of the ink because I need to know which side I put my embossing powder on in case I crumple too crazy. Okay. Then we can lay that down just don't, um, don't smooth it out. Let those wrinkles be as they are. And then we have our Versamark ink. So we just lightly, super lightly 
press over that with the Versamark ink. And then I'm going to use silver embossing powder in my handy dandy Tupperware containers. I feel like maybe I'm zoomed in too much, folks. Let's just zoom out a wee bit. There we go. So the Tupperware container with the silver embossing powder. Tupperware container was purchased from Melanie, who is watching, when she was a Tupperware consultant. She is no longer a Tupperware consultant, so you'll have to find Tupperware containers for your embossing powder from someone else. Okay, so tapped off the excess. And then you can look and make sure there's no really highly concentrated areas of embossing powder because we don't want it to take over. I, what I want is for it to just sort of um, hit those raised areas only. Then we can use our heat tool again. Come back. And it doesn't take long to heat it because the tissue paper warms up so quickly. And then the last thing we do is we're going to adhere it to a white background because that will, first of all, make it easier to work with, but it will also um, highlight the areas as I flatten it on the paper. So I'm using the Tombow Liquid Tombow Multi-Purpose Liquid Glue and I'm putting it on super thin using that flat side. All over. Um, other adhesive will work. Anything that you can cover the surface with. You don't want to put this multi-purpose liquid glue on too thick anywhere because it will go through the tissue paper because it's kind of a wet glue and it stays sticky when it's dry so we don't want that so I'm just making sure that I am applying it thoroughly yet thinly and then we can attach this so now we're just squishing it down onto that uh, sticky surface as is not not um, smoothing out those wrinkles we want those wrinkles to be present okay so that was the one with the ink pads rather than the re-inkers and you adding the uh, silver embossing powder before attaching it to my background piece Okay, so the next one, we're going to attach it first. So this one, I'm going to crinkle it up. And then I'm going to glue it on my background piece. Again, making sure it's thin. Stampin' Up! used to have glue sticks. And those were really great for this sort of thing because they didn't dry sticky. And it went on nice and, nice and smooth and thin. And it was inexpensive. But alas, it is not available anymore from Stampin' Up! But you know what? Most of us have glue sticks in our in our craft places. Okay, so then this I am going to just stick it down. No, remember we're not smoothing it out. We're just letting those wrinkles be as they are. Okay, so then we're going to apply the embossing buddy. Wow, mine feels so powdery lately. 
Mm, and again, the boss, embossing buddy helps to make sure that the uh, embossing powder doesn't stick to um, where you don't want it to, so static or or to uh, fingerprints or wet ink or or glue <laughs> in this case. Okay, then I'm using my Versamark same as before, just super light, like I'm barely, I'm not really, I'm not even pressing. And then again, our embossing powder, silver in this case, any metallic would look really cool. And I almost think, I think colored ones or white would look cool too. I don't know about black, but maybe. Okay, so you can already see, I don't know, it, I think maybe this way is what I prefer. I'm not really sure yet. Let's heat set this and see what we have. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. So I think what I like about the one that is um, I glued first and then heat embossed is that the lines actually match the crinkles, whereas the one that is done afterwards, some of those spots don't match. I don't know. I don't know if it makes that much of a difference, but so that's sort of what the technique ends up looking like. And then I have a couple of cards to share with you. So this is the card that we made at my class. So we used uh, different colored inks. So this was uh, Blueberry Bushel, Call Me Clover, and pineapple punch so those blended really nicely and that was with reinkers and the happy birthday banner so and the rectangle framelit dies made this beautiful frame and this one i used copper embossing powder and pulled in the copper with the cupcake um, paper liner here this is the other one that i made to show off the technique a bit so this one is with the colors that we use today. So here I have the framelit, the rectangle framelits dies. The stamp set is Lift Me Up. And it's, I uh, did that with a flirty flamingo ink. And then the glossy black paper with the Up and Away Thinlets dies to create this card. So this one I was thinking of my friend and just some things that she's been going through and yeah I just thought it would be nice to be able to send her just a little something to maybe lift her spirits. I hope you liked this video and I hope you enjoyed learning a new technique and seeing how it can be used. And if you do like it, make sure that you click on the thumbs up button or the heart button or leave a comment. All of those things will just give me some encouragement and help me to know what sorts of things you guys want to see more of. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, you might also like some of the things that I have to offer on my blog at inkingonthefly.com. So go on over there and check it out. But before you do, make sure you click on that subscribe button.